Questions of race and power are obviously not limited to the movies. In tonight's Brief But Spectacular, we hear from cultural theorist, author, and professor Brittany Cooper. She calls on us to look at the past during this Black History Month and recognize change should not always be gradual. Cooper recently came out with a new book, Eloquent Rage, A Black Feminist Discovers Her Superpower. I'm a black feminist, capital B, capital F. I'm unapologetically black and I'm unapologetically a feminist. And look, depending on what circles you're in, it's hard to be both those things at the same time. But I think that being both those things is the thing that will save us. If time had a race, it would be white. White people feel like they own time and control history. And there's a way that even if you go back to the early Western philosophers that everybody love, uh, my least favorite is George Hegel, who said, you know, Africa is no historic part of the world. So in the 1700s and 1800s, various groups of white European men got together and just decided that Africa didn't matter in the span of world history. I mean, talk about having some cojones. Time has a history, and so do black people. And part of the reason that we have, for instance, Black History Month in this country is because we literally have to make the argument that black people have actually done things that are significant to the creation of the nation state. And it turns out that if we didn't have things like Black History Month, apparently people would not believe uh, that black people were actually significant historical actors. We keep on relitigating basically the 1860s in this country. We have racial animus, the likes of which we have not seen in my lifetime, a resurgence of law enforcement engaging black folks in ways that are often deadly and often with impunity. White people dictate the pace of social inclusion, and they do so by saying, We'll get there. Why are you trying to push us so fast? That kind of pushing back the clock, which is a phrase that we use all the time, is a way in which those in power like to say to those of us who don't have power, we're going to determine not only what you get, but when you get it. And that is the critical difference between young activists who are in the streets saying, change it now, change it today. We don't want your gradualism. They remind me of the debates over slavery in this country and ending slavery in the 1800s. There were gradualists who said, we want to end slavery, but we want to do it in steps. So we'll free you, but you know, can you work 10 years? Can we sort of gradually phase you out of slavery? And there were others who said, we're going to pass this amendment, and at that moment, you will be free. And for those of us who continue to struggle with a white supremacist, capitalist, patriarchal power structure, immediate freedom is what we want. Gradualism does not serve us. There is a truth telling that happens at that nexus of blackness and feminism, at that space of having to work twice as hard to get half as far, which is a, a black proverb, and at that space of knowing that so often you can be the dopest chick in the room and they'll give it to the mediocre white man in the room. Putting those things together gives you a clarity and a vision about where we can go if we stop oppressing black folks and women and gender non-conforming folk. And so black feminism taught me that, and I think it can teach you that too. I am Brittany Cooper, and this is my brief but spectacular take on my eloquent rage. And you can watch additional Brief But Spectacular episodes on our website, pbs.org newshour brief.